what this one, this lesson is all about DNA translation. Now, last time we were looking at the first stage of protein synthesis, which is transcription. We explained how messenger RNA is formed in the nucleus using RNA polymerase, and how over here we've got the end product, and this is now about to leave because it's got a bit of a journey. So, messenger RNA is made here in the nucleus. It then travels through the cytoplasm to here. Now this is what's called endoplasmic reticulum. This is where the proteins are actually made. So it's a bit of a journey there for the messenger RNA. Let's see how it goes about that. But first of all, let's just think about what we've got to look at. Translation. Okay, second stage of protein synthesis, translation, and it says there occurs at the ribosomes in the cytoplasm. So this is the endoplasmic reticulum here. And this has on it a little ribosome. I'll draw one there. We'll come across the ribosome in just a second, but it makes it have a rough appearance. There is smooth endoplasmic reticulum in the cell. Well, this is rough endoplasmic reticulum, what we call RER, and that's where the proteins are made. So, the summary amino acids are joined together to form a protein chain following a sequence of codons on the messenger RNA. Here we have the messenger RNA. Messenger RNA is this blue one here. Now this has travelled all the way up from the nucleus. It's left the nucleus of our nuclear pores, little holes, and now it attaches to a ribosome on the rough endoplasmic reticulum. So we've got here, we've got the messenger RNA, we've got the ribosome. This ribosome in effect reads the message on the messenger RNA. And then we've got these structures here, these are called transfer RNA, and the transfer RNA carries amino acids to the ribosome. Now energy for the bond between the amino acid and the transfer RNA is provided by our old friend ATP. Now here you can see the polypeptide chain forming. A polypeptide is a protein chain. You can see they're being formed by linking together amino acids. Now how does this happen? Well, first of all we have this what's called complementary coding here. Now transfer RNA with complementary anticodon attaches to messenger RNA by specific base pairing. So you can see here we had AUG, the corresponding anticodon would be UAC. So codon is AUG, anticodon UAC. Then what happens is after the first amino acids have been released by the transfer RNA, the second transfer RNA attaches the next codon. You can see here the codon here is AUU. Down here I put this to show you more detail. The anticodon on the transfer RNA is obviously UAA and that UAA codes for a particular amino acid which it's brought in. Then we've got these two amino acids up here. Now they're attached to the were attached to the messenger RNA. They're now joined together by a peptide bond. That orange there is a peptide bond and having delivered its um, amino acid, the first transfer RNA molecule moves away to go and collect another amino acid. A third transfer RNA molecule binds the next codon, so UCG, and that codes to AGC there. And this brings along amino acid. So we've got here a chain being formed. Bond with the second amino acid and the second transfer RNA molecule now moves away and goes to pick up another amino acid. Now the process continues to form a chain of linked amino acids. We've got more there. And these will carry on linking together, forming a polypeptide chain, until a stop signal is reached on the messenger RNA. So one of the triplets will actually signify a stop. The polypeptide chain then moves away from the ribosome and translation has now been completed. There's some detail here you might want to look at. I've taken this from the CGP book and it talks here about non-overlapping, talks here about degenerate, and it talks about universal. Now, this is a bit higher level, you may not bother this bit. If you want to, you can find these terms here, non-overlapping, okay, degenerate, and universal. So you may want to spend a bit of time and look at those as well. Okay. Well, that's all you need to know about DNA translation. I say all you need to know. There's quite a lot to take on board. So well worth going back now through the video, checking things out for yourself. Okay, well, thanks for watching, listening, and bye-bye for now.